Okay, we're gonna go for our first test drive. We're just gonna go around the block. And what the heck, let's turn the heater on and see if it's working properly. I don't wanna to go too far. No, actually I wanna turn the heater off so I can hear everything. I think a lot of people who do electric cars expect them to be completely silent. And um, it's not completely silent. There's a sound that I'm not crazy about, but it sounds like it's coming from the rear end, so I can only guess it's just the brakes. It's probably something that you would never notice, you know, when you've got the engine running. But now that you don't have an engine running, it's kind of noticeable. I haven't installed the power brakes yet, so it's a little, uh, it takes a lot of pressure to get it to stop, but uh, the brakes still work, they're just not power. So it's actually, um, as I said earlier, it's actually very easy to shift without the clutch. So we're going to just, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and try and use first and second. There's second. Not sure I like that one spinning sound, but I'm hoping it's just the brakes. The only other thing it could be is if the coupler maybe moved a little bit and is rubbing against the, the transmission. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it in second since most people do. Didn't sound good, did it? If you can see the uh, speedometer, we're about 25, 30 miles an hour. It's hard to get used to uh, not using the clutch, frankly. Yeah, something's not right. Something definitely not right because it's making a bit of a chugging noise when I'm turning. We'll see if that's just when I'm turning or when I'm going straight. The only thing I could think is maybe the alignment isn't quite right on the uh, passenger drive shaft. Yeah, it doesn't do it. It only does it when you're turning. Hmm. Well, we'll have to worry about that later. Right now, we're just basically driving it around just to see if... You know, the couplers working, the, all the components are working, which they uh, certainly are. So I'm very excited about that. You can cut it. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to see if that little chugging is just because I was in second gear for some reason. So we'll try the exact same turn in first gear and see if it does the same thing. Nope, very smooth. So, you know what, I'm going to chalk it up into... Uh, you need to be in first gear if you're going to turn when you start, so uh, we'll do that. We'll take it and see if we can get up just a little bit more than 30 miles an hour and see what it sounds like. See if I can get it up to maybe 40 or 50. I live downtown, so it's not like I have a lot of open road around me, but uh, I should be able to get it up a little bit. And I'm turning, so I'm going to put it in first gear. Of course, we have to wait for traffic now. I got here two seconds earlier. We could have gone. You can edit this stuff out. We're gonna see if we can get uh, get a little bit of speed up on it. The acceleration isn't phenomenal, but I didn't build it to be a race car. Um, and I'm not really flooring it yet either because, again, I'm still just kind of seeing what it's capable of doing. I know that in second gear, um, I don't have to upshift. It's going to rev, uh, not really rev, but the, you know, the transmission's going to spin faster than what it normally would. You know what? I think that was the brakes because that sound sort of just went away. Um, so I think that was just the brakes from having set in the... Uh, set in the garage for a couple months. We're doing 40 now. 45. Let's go ahead and put it in third. Since I don't have a tachometer, I've got to figure out how to get that to work. Acceleration in the higher gears is definitely not, not much, but we're doing 50 miles an hour and it actually sounds incredibly smooth and uh, very quiet. Definitely going to have to remember to uh, just for this test drive to, to watch out for the stopping distance. Again, shifting um, 
one of the reasons I got this particular car is that it was very easy to shift without using the clutch. The uh, suspension, actually, is pretty good. It, uh, it sags in the back a couple inches because of all the extra weight. The front is actually pretty much right where it was to begin with. The ride is very comfortable. Hmm. I guess we're just going to have to start first. But the, the little grinding that I was hearing was definitely the brakes because that went away. And it was, I could tell it was definitely coming from the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and upshift. I'm, I'm just, I'm a little worried about over revving it just because I don't have a tack yet. Uh, the, this particular car gets its tack, this tack signal from the camshaft position sensor, which obviously I don't have a camshaft anymore, so there's no position to sense. So I'm going to have to come up with an aftermarket way of uh, figuring out exactly how many RPMs I'm doing. Um, but uh, right now it's, it's very smooth. Um, I think third gear is about the highest I'll ever need it. It's been a long time since I've had a car with manual brakes, and this wasn't uh, designed to stop without the power boost, so the brakes are undersized to be run without it. But you can stop, it just takes a lot more pressure than what you're used to. It's definitely get, you know, getting used to the fact that you're so silent when you're sitting still. All of that rubbing from the brakes has gone away, I'm very happy about that. We'll see how fast we can get up to before we have to slow down here. I don't want to get on the highway yet to see what sort of top speed I can expect. Um, that'll be interesting, but I'm definitely going to have to do the brakes first. And I want to drive it around a little bit just to get a feel for uh, what it's going to do before I, before I start going crazy, before I get too far away from home base or before I even think about getting on the highway. So far, so good, though. It seems to be running very nicely. You know, one of the things to, to get used to is the difference between a gas motor and electric motor. Uh, electric motors are actually more efficient when you're running them at higher RPMs, whereas a gas motor gets better mileage when you're running them at lower RPMs. So, you know, the fact that the, that the uh, engine is spinning at such a high RPM just going to have to get used to and, and realize that that's okay. So we are coming back up on our garage. We're going to pull back in. And that's pretty much it until I get the brakes sorted out. Um, plus it's using quite a bit of a charge, which is... It's also the middle of winter. It's about uh, 30 degrees right now. So I know that your uh, range absolutely suffers When you uh, when the when when, the, when it's cold, your batteries don't perform as well when it's cold. Also, you know, batteries when they're brand new, they need a little time to uh, to get up to snuff. So, the one way it was described to me is that they're sort of like a sponge. You have to squeeze them and fill them up, and empty them and fill them up a few times before they really work properly. So. So far, so good. Um, I'm very happy. Oh. And uh, I'm glad you were with me. I don't have that EV Grand quite yet, but I'm just, I'm just the type of person that I want to I wanna know it's really working and working perfectly before I get too excited. So I did blow out my meters by uh, a silly mistake, so I'm going to have to buy some new meters. But um, otherwise, so far, so good. Everything's working pretty well, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Thanks.